Hey guys, in this video we're going to be checking out this new transmitter from Jumper. It's called the T8SG. And this is a universal transmitter that pretty much will bind to everything out there. And additionally, it uses Deviation TX, so the firmware is upgradable. And so it is also going to be compatible with future protocols out there that use the following chips. It uses the uh, CC2500, the NRF24L01, A7105, and the CYR F63 or F F6936 chip. So these, there's a four-in-one chip there in there. Pretty much covers all the protocols that are out there: Free Sky, Fly Sky, Futaba, Spectrum, DSM2, DSMX, and pretty much all the toy brands out there. And I'm going to cover some of those. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to be able to cover everything this video is going to go just it's going to go way too long and so i'll talk about that a little later as to like what future videos might entail and you guys can let me know and give me some feedback as to what you want to see but you know just give a brief overview of the uh, transmitter itself uh it comes in mode two you can see here throttles not centered on on the left here throttles on the left you have four uh three position switches on the top here and you have two um dials on the top here so this is a 10 channel uh transmitter out of the box it is a you can change it i think i believe you can go up to 12 and maybe possibly more with some firmware uh, updates and changes um overall I, I i actually like this radio it, it's small compact very light the gimbals are okay they're not the best obviously they're not like the hall gimbals on the tyrannus um, but you know this radio is coming in at about $80. I think if it's on flash sale right now for like $72. And it offers a lot of features. And if you happen to have a lot of models, uh, like for example myself, I pretty much fly everything. And as a reviewer, I get sent uh, random stuff sometimes. Some, you know, sometimes I'll ask for a Fly Sky uh, receiver, a model with a Fly Sky receiver, and I'll get a Free Sky receiver. Or I'll get something else, Spectrum, for example. So I have a lot of receivers and having something like this really helps in terms of saving time for me because I can just take one transmitter out to the field instead of taking my Tyrannus and then my uh, Turing Evolution and then maybe I have to take a 4-in-1 module for my Tyrannus to, to connect to Spectrum, etc. And, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of inconvenient to carry all that stuff, all that equipment out to just, to, you know, fly two or three different models. Having one transmitter and... Um, uh, and having it very convenient like this is very very useful for me and it might be might be useful for you although your situation might be different and you may prefer to go with a single transmitter because you don't have a lot of miles and you prefer to have a you know a nicer transmitter with better sticks you know maybe something heavier if you don't like anything really light etc another thing that is kind of um, cool about this transmitter is that it's power switchable so you can go from like 0 0.01 watts to I think up to 150 milliwatts. So it's, it's got a wide range and it's actually uh, uh, has more power on certain protocols than what's standard in uh, other radios. So for example, the Tyrannus, I think that the standard default is 100 milliwatts. Uh, this can go up to 150 milliwatts on FreeSky. On FlySky, on the uh, i6 radio, I think it's 60 milliwatts. This goes up to 150 milliwatts. So if you're having range issues on some of your other protocols, uh, Spectrum, Fly Sky, for example, then maybe boosting up to 150 milliwatts will give you a little more range and you'll have less dropouts, something that uh, you may want to consider just for that feature on this radio alone. Now, comparing the size of this to the radio that I've been flying uh, mostly in the last, I guess, about a year is the Turning Evolution. This is the one that I've been using quite a bit. You can see that uh, obviously a different form factor. Uh, the jumper does weigh a little bit less and is a little bit uh, not as wide. Although the, uh, the the form factor of the evolution is very nice in the hands because you have these grips on the side here. They make it like a Game Boy type or like an Xbox type controller. So it's very very nice to hold when you're when you're flying. Obviously this is more of a traditional uh, form factor here. And it took me a little while to get back to used to flying like this because I, 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 I've been so used to flying with these sort of grips on the side that it is a little bit different. But I've been using this for about a week and a half and have no issues uh, readjusting to it. In fact, I actually uh, like this a lot and I'm probably going to switch, uh, believe it or not. I'm going to probably stop using the Evolution and I'm going to stick go and go to the jumper because of, of the one specific reason and it has to do with firmware updates. 
This is this is getting regularly updated. In fact, this came with a, an October release of firmware. This is like the second release of the jumper with some modifications and improvements. And the Trinity Evolution doesn't really get any firmware updates, so that's kind of a downside of the Evolution. It's, it's got a nice form factor, and I like I like how it flies and the way it feels, but uh, this is not being uh, supported, and I think Hobby King is discontinuing this because they're, they've uh, dropped the price to like $38 for this. I think they're, either, the, either they're coming with a newer version, or they stopped supporting this this version, so and basically this this radio, this radio, at least in this form factor, is going to be going away. So one of the reasons why I'm going to be switching over to the jumper. Okay, so if you compare the jumper next to the Flysky i6 radio, you can see here, again, much smaller and not as heavy. And the gimbals are a little bit closer together. So it's something that you'll have to get used to if you want to fly with the jumper. But uh, it's something that did not take me very long to get used to and I actually find it very comfortable. But you can see that uh, the uh, Flysky is also quite a bit bigger. And here is the jumper next to the Tyrannus QX7. And obviously you can see here the QX7 is much, much larger and much more heavier, obviously. Uh, but, you know, it, 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 well, it really boils down to whether or not you prefer the larger size. Some people do, some people don't. If you prefer something smaller, you know, definitely uh, check out the jumper. It might be worth you know, your time to check it out. The other thing that I uh, forgot to mention before is that the antenna is detachable. And I believe this is an SMA antenna. Yeah, it's an SMA antenna. So if you want to uh, use an antenna with a higher gain, you can definitely swap this out. Or if you want to use a range booster, you can boot, you want to use one of those 2 watt range boosters and really boost up your range with this if you want to do that. So uh, you don't have to do any mods to uh, switch out the antenna, which is kind of nice. Now the jumper does not come with a battery. So let me just show you uh, what's going on here with the uh, battery compartment. It's, there's, a, there's a battery compartment right here. And let's see if we can get some light into it. Okay, so there's, there's a pretty large battery compartment here that you can stick a fairly long uh, and narrow battery. And I'll, let me show you the battery I'm using here in a second. But it just uses uh, a, a 2S a balance lead connector right here, just like on the Tyrannus. And, and uh, there's a USB port that is right there. That they actually, and this is the second version of the jumper they've actually fixed that so it's more accessible. The USB port in the first version was in a, it was kind of sticking up and you had to do, drill a hole or something, some sort of a uh, mod to get the access to the USB port. So that is going to be used for firmware updates if you want to do that in the future. And that is much more accessible. Let me just show you the, the battery that I'm using. So I found this battery. It's pretty big. It's an 1800 milliamp hour 2S. And this is actually the battery from the Bugs uh, 2 and 3. Actually, this battery works for the Bugs 2 and 3. And I've actually decased it. So this battery uh, from the Bugs 2 uh, comes in a case. You have to un basically, it comes with two pe plastic pieces that are screwed together. And you take that apart. And then the battery is inside. And this battery fits in very nicely, almost perfectly, uh, in, in, in the battery compartment. Uh, you can use, obviously, smaller batteries. And initially, I was using a smaller 500 milliamp hour uh, 2S LiPo. And you just connect it with the uh, balance lead here. But this one fits really nicely. And so let me just uh, slide that in. And then uh, just tuck away the wires. And then you just plug in the balance lead uh, right here. It's a little um, it's a little bit awkward to get to the bat uh, to plug this in because it's kind of uh, kind of a little bit recessed. So. It's a little bit tricky, but uh, thankfully with this larger battery, I don't have to change the batteries too often. Okay, just took the wires away and then just close up the door. And when I was using the smaller 500 milliamp hour LiPo, I was using, uh, actually it was this one here, this is a Zippy uh, 500. I wasn't getting very, it didn't seem like it was, it was lasting too long. It would, the voltage would drop pretty quickly from 8.4 volts to about 7.8 volts within an hour or so. Um, not, you know, it wasn't, it was a little bit, I was a little bit concerned that the battery would die on me while I'm flying. There are, are obviously alarms and stuff in the, uh, in the transmitter you can set for your battery voltage. Uh, but with this really large 1800 milliamp hour LiPo, I was actually flying, I've been flying this for the last three days. And 
I think I probably flew about 60 or 70 flights. And obviously it was fully charged at 8.4 volts and now we're at 7.98 volts. So it's, it's dropped from 4.2 volts to about 4 volts in about 3 days of flying. So um, if you guys are looking for a battery that's going to last a long time on the jumper, definitely check out that battery. I think it's about 15 bucks on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. You guys can check it out. But yeah, that's that's one thing that you have to get a battery for this. Obviously, like on the Trans QX7, it's the same issue. You have to get a 2S LiPo for that one as well, or you can use, uh, I think, six AA batteries to power that. So, you know, it's a low cost thing. Uh, you obviously need AA batteries for the FlySky i6. I think that's kind of run of the mill for the, these low cost radios. Okay, so I'm zoomed in here, and I'm gonna show you the, the transmitter screen here and how to access the models. It's actually fairly intuitive. It, it, if you guys want like a more in-depth uh, video on uh, setting up models, binding, that kind of stuff, uh, let me know in the comments below, and I'll, I'll think about making a more sophisticated video. I'm not sure how much of a demand there's gonna be for this radio in, in terms of setup and stuff. Uh, uh, maybe in the future, you know, it might be. So if you if you see if you're seeing this video many months in the future from when this video was published, uh, let me know, and I'll, obviously I'll just keep you know tabs of those comments. And at some point, if something, if I have time, I might make a more uh, some more in depth video on how to use this radio. It's actually not that difficult. But I'll go here in the main menu. You have a model menu, transmitter menu, USB about deviation. I think we're on the October fifth release. There's a uh, November 11th release it was just jumped out on the forums a few days ago. I'm not going to bother updating because um, pretty much all of the things, the little bugs, whatever, were fixed in this version. And there's a couple features that were added to the November 11th version that don't really uh, have, doesn't affect me at all, so I'm not going to bother. So if you don't really need any new features, there's no reason to uh, update the firmware. So I'm just going to go ahead and add that one. Here's the main, the main menu that you want to go to is the model menu. And here, when you go to model setup, I'm, I actually set up this one of these models here under the FreeSky uh, protocol. And here, you can select your different protocols. So let me uh, actually exit out of this, and we'll set up a new model. I can show you every every protocol that's available. So you hit load, and I have a few models here set up. Let's set up a new one here. So by default, there's 30 available on the memory. Here's a new one, number seven, that has nothing. And I, I can obviously I can can change the name here if I want. I'm just gonna leave that alone. Um, here you can change the transmit power and and go all the way down to I think it's 100 microwatts. Yeah, and all the way up to 150 milliwatts. So uh, yeah, it's it's pretty flexible there. And then here are all the different protocols that you can. Uh, set up here with the this radio. A lot of these I, I'm not even I'm not even sure what they are. Some of these are, I think the WK is like a Walkera, obviously DSM2. We know what that is. DSMX, J6 Pro. We don't know what that is. FlySky. That's the first generation FlySky protocol, and then this is uh, this is the second generation FlySky protocol. You got Hubson, Jasway, uh, FreeSky. So this is. I believe there's three different FreeSky protocols on here. There's FreeSky, FreeSky V8, and FreeSky X. Yeah, so FreeSky X is going to be connecting to all of your X uh, style receivers like the XSR, XM Plus. Um, and what the nice thing about this is you can bind multiple receivers to one model, which is what I'm doing with all my X, X receivers. Uh, and then if you have the older receivers like the D, uh, D4R2, you'd use the FreeSky V8. And then I'm not exactly sure what free, the free sky here is. I might be one of the older, maybe the older models. I'm not sure. I'm, I've only used um, V8 and X. Let's see what else we got. Sky Attack. Uh, I think that was. I think this one is Futaba. And some of these I don't even know what they are. A lot of these are are toy are toy brands like the SEMA. Um, you're gonna have to know what protocol your particular toy model uses because I. Uh, I have a few, a few toy models I'll show you that I've connected to, but uh, there's so many out there. Uh, there's just no way to know what's what. Uh, Bang is one that I've, I've been using for the E011 and the Bwoop uh, 03. Yeah, so 
obviously here, I can't, uh, there's just, there's literally a, like 50 of them here, so I'm not going to go through everything here, but let me just show you a few of the models that I've uh, set up, and then I'll uh, show you that they're actually working, and, and we'll uh, end the video at that point. So let me uh, exit out of this, and let's go back in here, let's go and bring up uh, the being protocol. So, uh, I've already set this up previously, so I'll just go ahead and, and load this up. And when you load it up, some of these toy protocols will start to bind as soon as you load it up. Or as you, if, you turn, if, you, if it's already set to this model, which it now currently is, if you turn it off and turn it on, it'll go into bind mode automatically. So let me just demonstrate that. Okay, so I've got the uh, BWOOP uh, OB03 Pro, and this is the Ishin E011. They both use the same protocol, and they're slowly linking as ready to bind. My radio is off. I just turn on my radio. They start flashing really fast. It means it's starting to bind. And then the radio will, will buzz, it'll vibrate, and then beep. And then you know that you're bound because you have solid lights in both. And actually, I can uh, fly them both if I want to. You can see that they're both bound at the same time, which is something you can do with these toy protocols. And also, if you're using uh, FreeSky X and have all the receivers bound to the same model, you can do that too. And also with some FlySky receivers, and I'll explain that here in a second as well. Okay, so here I have a couple of models here that use the FlySky micro receivers, and specifically the RX 2A Pro. It'll work for any of the micro receivers that don't have telemetry back to the transmitter. And, um, I have them all bound to the same model. It works exactly the same way that the Turnage Evolution works. Uh, once you bind them, bound them to the model, uh, you can use all these receivers to the same model. As long as they're all set up the same way, everything should work just fine. Just gonna make sure that in Betaflight Configurator, all of the models are set up the same way. Otherwise, bad things will happen. So just keep that in mind. So let me uh, switch our switch my model here. I'm gonna load up. This is a FS2A, FlySky 2A. So now I'm on that model, and I'm broadcasting at 150 milliwatts. It's the AFHDS2A protocol, and I'm already bound, so I'm not going to show that. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and plug in these separately. Okay, so I've them both turned on, and they should be bound to the radio. Let's go ahead and arm both of these, and you'll see that the props spin up, that they're both bound and working. And yeah, so obviously you can do the same thing you do in the Evolution, where you can bind up multiple miles to, to the same model in your radio, which is nice. I like that a lot. Okay, just a few uh, last things I, I didn't mention earlier. You probably noticed that I changed my gimbal sticks here, because uh, I wanted them a little bit taller than the stock ones. Uh, these are actually just off of a FlySky i6 radio, but you can get these pretty much anywhere. Uh, they're just uh, M M3 gimbal stick attachments. Uh, they're not that expensive. If you want to increase the size of your stick, you can do that. I, I actually prefer the feel of the i6 sticks anyway. And so if you're wondering where that came from, that's that. And then I'm also using these gimbal, this gimbal protector here that I printed off of Thingiverse. I'll put a link in the description for this. And I can just uh, put this on here and then stick it into my uh, transmitter bag or this nice case that the jumper came with. And then uh, it also comes with a nice neck strap, but if you stick the transmitter in here and you want to stick some other stuff in here as well, you don't want anything to be hitting the sticks, using the gimbal protector will keep that, keep the gimbal safe and won't damage them. Anyway guys, that's going to do it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. If you have any uh, suggestions for future videos, uh, I'm just thinking of off the top of my head some examples. For example, how to bind a certain uh, protocols, radios, models, uh, leave me comments below as to which ones you would be interested in because there's just so much uh, area to, to cover for this transmitter. I don't know what people would be interested in and I don't want to spend a lot of time uh, making a video where no one's going to be interested in that content. So do definitely leave me suggestions below and I'll, I'll compile them over the coming weeks and then come up with a future video to, to come up with uh, you know, answers to your questions and something that'll be helpful for everybody. And so hopefully that, that, that will guide me in terms of making a better video for you guys down the road. If you guys are interested in more content on this transmitter. 
Anyway guys, that's going to do it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.